Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's return now to our main story and the Chancellor, George Osborne, joined the Prime Minister by publishing a summary of his tax return today. David Cameron told MPs that Prime Ministers and Chancellors alone should do it in future. But the Prime Minister's statement was interrupted by the Labour veteran MP, Dennis Skinner, who ended up being thrown out of the chamber for calling Mr Cameron Dodgy Dave. I still refer to him as Dodgy Order the honourable member to withdraw immediately from the house. Well, the prime minister insisted today there was nothing wrong with aspiring to be wealthy. What of that and the issues raised by the so-called Panama Papers? Well, joining me now is the editor of the Spectator, Fraser Nelson, and from the class think tank, economist Faisal Shaheen. Uh, Fraser, first. I mean, the prime minister seemed to be saying that offshore wasn't necessarily a dirty word, but if you look at the figures, reportedly what twenty-one trillion dollars held offshore, mm. that would pay for a lot of schools and hospitals, wouldn't it? Yeah, and the money comes to schools and hospitals when people will actually sell shares in the offshore trust. I mean, the revenue has been encouraging offshore industry because it helps Britain become a world leader in global finance. Offshore trust helps you, via Britain, invest in all sorts of complicated methods and currencies and denominations. It has worked for Britain because it ultimately means more cash for the British taxpayer, more cash for schools and hospitals. It benefits everybody. Offshore benefits everybody. I don't think the numbers really back that up. I mean, HMRC themselves show there's what 35 billion in the t in terms of the tax gap and what we should be getting and what we're that's not getting. That's not offshore, though. And that's partly to do with offshore. I mean, I think there's very few argument, very few that would make that kind of argument. Of course, we're losing money in tax, and we're losing money in tax because people don't feel like they should pay tax. They've got huge amounts of wealth at the top now, unprecedented levels of wealth at the top. And they're keeping, they're hoarding that money, they're wealth hoarders. Well, look, 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 there's a big difference. If you, if you don't declare your tax, sure, you, you're a tax avoider, you should go to jail for that. But that, if you own money in offshore accounts, that doesn't mean to say you're inherently dodgy. What we saw Dennis Skinner doing there, saying dodgy Dave, that sums up the whole week, basically using insults um, mm. without any evidence of any wrongdoing and implying, as you were just there, that offshore is inherently dodgy. Well, let, let, let's, dodgy Dave, I mean, it is the sort of politics of envy, isn't it? And isn't there a danger that if you go down this route of full disclosure and sort of scorning the wealthy, you're going to end up in the Commons, for example, with underperformers, as Alan Duncan was saying. I think that's really offensive. I mean, I think um, people that pay their taxes can also have aspirations. Uh, and I think that what we're seeing right now is a way to undermine the argument that, of course, earn your money, pay your tax, and that's not about politics of envy. I mean, what that's basically saying, the rich didn't pay their tax, and do you know what? I blame you. You're, you're, you poor, you the others that didn't, that have been paying your tax. You're just envious. I mean, what is that? What is that argument? Well, nobody has not been paying their taxes here. I, again, you're suggesting that David Cameron some are guilty of not paying his taxes. The reverse tax. is true. The idea that if the, the, the idea that you're not paying taxes just because you invest in an offshore fund is complete invention. Well, but it's plenty of individuals well. do use offshore trusts and funds to avoid tax, or you know, quite legitimate that avoid tax or avoid regulations, don't they? The, it has been done for tax efficient reasons. You don't want to avoid double taxation, so you want to pay more tax in. Britain, less You're tax saying in Panama, that everyone that, that works. isn't paying their tax right now, corporations, all those people um, that are offshoring aren't avoiding tax at all. Is that what you're saying? They're just doing it because it's tax. Uh, not well, at all. Efficient. Everybody should be paying the full amount of tax. But again, it's a completely separate issue. You don't need to have an offshore bank account to avoid tax. They're two very different issues. And David Cameron's mum was right to try and minimise inheritance tax, as, as plenty do, if, if indeed that's what she tried I'd to do. I'd be surprised if there's any country of the sort of wealth of the Camerons who don't do that sort of thing. You hand down money to the children early to avoid inheritance tax. It's a standard procedure. Is it illegal? No. If the government doesn't like it, they should change it. But again, it's a sort of innuendo that the Prime Minister has had a lot of this. He's basically been found guilty of being the son of a stockbroker, but we knew that. We okay. knew it when he was re-elected. OK, but the way to avoid innuendo is full disclosure, which is what the Prime Minister mm -hmm. and the Chancellor have Failed done. To do. so, well, they, well, they did belatedly. Eventually, yeah, eventually after yeah. this great... Yeah. So does that apply, as some in the Commons have um, suggested to political journalists too? Would you publish your tax return? Do you think you're going to have to go down that route? I like to think that we're not going to go down the route that in Scandinavia, where everybody's got to publish 
their tax returns. In Britain, we, we tend to keep these things in private. We tend not to discuss with each other at work how much we earn. We don't maybe tend to we have... should. It would be good for gender pay gap, perhaps, for example. Well, the gender pay gap is, is closing fast. It's going into reverse if you're under 35. Um, and sure, perhaps men would be able to catch up with women in the younger ages if they publish the tax returns. <laughs> but again, this is a, a separate issue. In Britain, we don't, I, I don't think the Scandinavian route is for us. Not for us to publish no, our I tax No, I think returns. that the, what's happening right now with transparency is where we've come to in the cycle of inequality. It's unfortunate that the trust is completely broken down. It's not the same as what's happened in Scandinavia. What's happened here is because we don't trust the politicians anymore. And it's because they're from a small elite, they tend to be wealthy, and that's not a good state of society. It's not we a bad just thing can't trust itself. them to act in our interest. Not because they're wealthier. Themselves. Again, this is a language I think is very unhelpful. The idea is inverted snobbery, effectively. If you're wealthy, you're probably dodgy and you probably can act in the interest of the people who elect you. Fraser Nelson, Pfizer Shaheen, thank you very much for joining us. I've been getting away.